Hey guys, Dave here from Wicked Tanks. Welcome back for part two of the Brine Shrimp series. Let's do a quick review of the parts and we'll get started. First item here is the syringe, some airline tubing, some small plastic containers from the dollar store, uh, old brine shrimp packet, some scissors, and some wooden dowels. This is just going to be a quick time lapse of the first day we put the brine shrimp in. Then we've got after 24 hours, and then we've got after 48 hours to give you an idea of what it looks like. Full disclosure guys, there was a lot of background noise on my audio when this was filmed, so we're doing this as a voiceover. What we're looking at here is the syringe and how that syringe attaches to the airline tubing. Um, we're going to be using that here and another clip or two to extract the brine shrimp from the hatchery. Some regular scotch tape is going to be an item I forgot to put on the parts list for us in the beginning. We're going to use a couple pieces of that to attach the airline tubing to a wooden dowel which will give us more control um, when it comes time to getting that airline tubing to the bottom of the 2 liter to extract the brine shrimp. This recipe actually produces quite a large amount of brine shrimp. So one thing we're going to need to take into consideration is what we're going to do with it once we've fed a little bit to our tanks and we've got some extra. Those small containers you can get at the dollar store, um, what I'm going to try to do is use an old brine shrimp packet and see if we can put those into those cube shaped containers and get them to freeze just like you would buy from the store. If you're going to try to reuse one yourself, just be careful because that plastic is thin and I had a couple of them that actually leaked so I water tested those first. Here comes yet another item that I forgot to put on our parts list. A uh, flashlight is going to be handy, it's going to be helpful. You could use the light bulb that we used in part one. Um, I'm using the flashlight just because I can direct the light source a little bit better than if I tried to use the light bulb. Regardless of what you use, you're going to want to focus the light towards the bottom of the 2 liter. Once we turn off the air supply, the brine shrimp are going to gravitate towards that light source no matter where it is. Um, we're going to want to get it to the bottom because you're going to see once everything settles to the bottom, that's where we're going to be extracting from. Oh, there's a little trick I forgot to mention in part 1. If you take the bottom of that 2 liter that we cut off, Turn it upside down and place it over the opening. It'll help prevent some evaporation um, when the hatchery is running. This next clip is going to be a close-up of the brine shrimp making their way towards the bottom of the cap, which is where the light source is pointing. Let that light sit for a few minutes, and when you come back, you're going to see something that looks very similar to this. All of the live brine shrimp have made their way to the bottom and all of the eggs and debris are sitting floating on top. You're going to see here in just a second why it was important to have such a large syringe for this extraction. We ended up having over 50 milliliters of brine shrimp that we pulled out of this batch. You'll see the water start to clear out through the airline tubing as you're pulling towards the bottom. You don't want to pull in too much of that water because it's very salty and I don't strain the brine shrimp through a net. I feed directly into the tank so you want to try to keep that as concentrated as you possibly can. Most fish will enjoy a little bit of brackish water but you just don't want to overdo it. And that is all there is to it guys. What we're going to take a look at next is just a couple live feedings. We'll show you the cichlid tank getting fed and I'll also show you the guppy tank getting fed. Once those feedings are over, you're going to see us putting the extra brine shrimp into containers for the freezer, and you're good to go. We're also going to have a quick little bonus clip for you at the end to show you what we do with the final remaining brine shrimp that were still in the hatchery. Stay tuned.
quick little bonus video for you guys. I pulled some extra brine shrimp out of the container that were still floating around in there and put them into this Tupperware container. Got a airstone in there just keeping the water circulating and we'll see what they do. Uh, thank you guys for following along. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.